going to make um, a tea cozy for a teapot that looks like kind of like a shell. And this is in Tunisian. So now I'm going to use the actual color of the yarn for this, the, the body. And uh, since I'm going to be using Tunisian, I need to go a hook and a half at least, if not two, larger. So this is Willow Yarns Cub. It's 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. The hook is a six millimeter hook. So I'm going to use a 10 millimeter hook. Okay. So this is like an entrelock. You don't need a Tunisian hook for this. You're only going to get up to six stitches. So go ahead, do your slip knot. And do four chains. Go back into your first stitch. And pull it all the way through. You want to be able to put your finger through and go back in to that four chains. Go ahead and do eight single crochets going around just like you were going to do your eyeball. It's, it's a basic um, flat circle. I'll meet you back when I have eight on that four chain loop. So I have eight on my loop. I'm going to slip stitch into the first single crochet and then pull, pull this. Chain two and go back into the chain second chain from the hook, yarn over and pull up one, and go into the single crochet on the loop, the first row, and then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Chain two, And go back into the chain, second chain from the hook, yarn over, and pull up one, and go into the single crochet on the loop, the first row. And then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, there's the bar. Yarn over and pull that loop up. And then go into the single crochet. This is the third one in that same single crochet. Okay, start a new row, but this time we're going to increase and we use this right here as your, um, your bar to pull up. Now we're going into the next single crochet, so you got to kind of pull back a little bit to make sure you're not skipping a single crochet. And that, that, that increases it. Now you have four loops on your hook. Okay, so yarn over and pull through two, all the way to the end. Okay, you don't need to increase because you are continuing to 
anchor into that second single crochet on the first round. Just cinch up a little bit, pull that tight before you start the next row. Okay, so that's one, two, this is three. This is an increase row, so we go one, oops, before I do that, cinch it, one, two, okay, and now we're going to use this right here as your leg, and into the next single crochet on the loop. Do your reverse pass. Cinch it. Okay, that's the second row. Do the reverse pass. For the second row. This is the third row for this single crochet hub point. See there's two there, now you do three. It. Now we're going to start a new row for the new single crochet. So that means we pick it up and we increase one more stitch. Go into the next single crochet. Forgot to cinch it up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that makes six. So this is as wide as I want to go with this hook and this yarn. Just because this hook tapers so much. Baby. What's wrong? What? what are you trying to tell me? What, what are you trying to tell me? You're fine. You have snacks all day. <laughs> he gets anxious if he doesn't see food in his bowl, even though he just ate. But I think he likes a lot of attention, too. Okay, so that's one more row. Now this is the third row for this hub, this single crochet hub. Okay. You're still doing three rows, but we're not increasing anymore. Going forward, we are no longer picking up a stitch here to increase off of this leg. But we're still doing three rows. Going into the next one without adding any more stitches. That's just because if I added any more stitches, it would get too wide. I mean, it's already a little, it's pushing it a little bit. Okay, so I have added some more rows. 
um, when I start to um, I come around this way I'm doing three in every um, single crochet and then when I start to go up on here I notice that the curve is not as um, steep like right around here so some of these I only put two um, two rows in until I get to uh, here and the reason why I stopped here is I kept fitting it against my teapot Just put the, but it, it is going to stick up a lot because this teapot is of a different shape than the one I made earlier before. You know, this one doesn't really have as high of a profile. So, and I, with that one, I connected them by the shell here. And this curl around and then we did a little connection under here but that means that this has to be bigger like almost by another row around and that means this is going to be even taller going around and it might it might not fit because this one has such an odd shape yeah I just wanted to, to, to check in with you and let you know how you know, I, I adjust the number of rows per, um, I guess we call this like an anchor point. Each one of these, you know, is on the side. It's like an anchor. So I am at um, six loops on my hook before I start back. Technically, it's only five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I go into the anchor uh, on the outside of the, the spiral. It looks just like a single crochet, but it's the outside of your, uh, your rows. So this is the entrelock part where you are going into another row or another uh, side. Okay, so I've done two there. And I, I, um, I am very much a freeform crocheter. I don't have a lot of, you know, patience with exact um, rules because everybody has a different gauge. Everybody um, has different yarn. Um, different. I'm going to put three in the, on this one and show you. If I don't like it, I'll just take it out. But that's another thing is I test it. And see, hmm. Do I like that? Make sure you tighten the last, the last stitch. Now, that, see how this is going? It's like it's kind of pushing it out. See if I can push that in. It is supposed to stick out pretty much straight out from your uh, circle. So. That's another thing to, to kind of check every now and then. Make sure that you're you're sticking straight out. Um, I think that's the diameter. It's been a while since I took geometry. I have to ask uh, my boyfriend all the time, what's the difference between a diameter and a circumference? Because I get him confused. Okay, so we've done three. I'm not going to do any more in this side stitch, so I'm going to go into the next one. So then we pull up, we have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're not making any wider than that because of my hook. You could make a wider spiral and go faster, but you'll have to anchor in more, I think, on your, um, your more rows per anchor stitch to make your circle Go around. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a lot of traffic on the road. We have a lot of construction going on on our roads. 
right now. So I apologize, the noise of the trucks going around. Okay, so that was one. I'm definitely going to put at least two in this anchor stitch. Just check it, see how it's going. And I'm putting the point over the spout and then tucking it up like that. So this will go, um, I'll, I'll connect underneath here and I'll connect at the top and at the bottom. And, but I've got all this space to fill and so it's better to do it with the spiral than to have to fill it in later but the top of the point goes in the middle and you'll connect it with the other spiral like that so leave your uh, tails long enough to use as um, like when you start to cut this stuff make sure your tails are long enough so that you can use them to um, weave together the two pieces at the point one is going to have this side showing and the other is going to have this side showing so I can't help that um, it was pretty um, hard to tell with the fuzzy scrubby yarn that I used and the other teapot so maybe you could use something like that like a scrubby yarn um, this will take some heat from your teapot so you want to make sure that you've got um, some cotton you know some sort of, of yarn that can take the heat I was pleasantly surprised with that scrubby cotton that had a uh, it's 100% cotton tape with one edge or so that was like fuzzy so it came out looking really interesting All right, so I'm gonna meet you back when I've uh, tested this a couple times and keep going until it's the right size. Okay, so I have put a couple more rows in, not that many. It um it fills out quickly. So yeah, just put that corner over the spout and then have it stretch across to here so you're going from here to here and you'll fill in all of this so now make another one of these and try to match the size of it so let's go ahead and make another one and I will meet you back okay so now I have my two uh, shells that's um you remember you can pull this one the center one tight because you crocheted over it and then you can hide it I'm gonna do that at the end okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to overlap these two because I feel like it will fill it better just overlap it just by like a couple of stitches so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to pull it through Just a couple of stitches. Three. Three stitches. There we go. So now they're overlapped. And 
just push them around to the back. And this one's a little different than the other one in that it might actually just fit. I can just fit the whole shell together. The other one I had to like actually add a piece in, but this one is uh, a little different. So let's go ahead and start crocheting it together. Uh, let's see how far back we need to go. about here I guess. We'll, we'll check it a couple times. So this is where we want to start. It's where it stopped overlapping right here and we'll start putting it back together. Not that it matters because one side is going to be inside and the other is going to be outside. It doesn't matter. I keep forgetting about that. So let me do a slip knot. I'll just just slip stitch it together and you could do a fancy slip stitch if you want there's the, a zigzag that's actually kind of cute um, so that way if you want to put it on the outside it kind of goes like this I think And I don't know if you noticed, I switched to a smaller crochet hook for this. Um, it's a 5.5. I probably should have gone down to a 6, but oh well. I always reach for this baby. All right, I'll meet you back when I get to the point where I want to stop. So I have just done a little s slip stitch. It doesn't really matter which side you want to show. You could show this side, you could show this side. <laughs> but there it is, that's the, uh, the form. I'm going to bind off here, just do a slip stitch and cut, pull through, okay. Now it'll fit over the thing. We want to start to bring it in around the um, oh, what is this called? The opening, the front of the shell. So let me move some of these threads. And let's, let's start like here. We'll go from here around to here. I want to do more Tunisian going back and forth. Hello, Evan. There we go. Oh. Hello, baby. Hello, you pretty boy. Okay. Let's tighten up the slip knot. And then do a slip stitch. Okay. You gonna help me? I need help here. Pretty boy. 
Ui. I guess that I don't want it to be too tight. Because it will have to fit over this. Okay, so I made it to here. It's always a challenge to get that side thing in. Okay, so now I'm just going to do some Tunisian back and forth. Here, you keep the teapot cozy. You be the teapot cozy. And I'm going into the stitch, into the chain stitches, and just pulling up a loop. I don't know what this is called, what I'm doing here with this, because I'm hooking it both sides. It's not like just hooking into one side and doing the spiral. And that's a lot of stitches for this hook. So now I'm going to go down, and now I'm just going to do two at a time. So whenever you add in a, um, a, a stitch from a, um, a side wall, you get, um, you get that leveled up uh, thing going on. So you don't have to yarn over and pull through one. You can go right into yarning over and pulling through two. Okay, so now that I'm down at the bottom, I'm just going to do a slip stitch to attach it to this wall. Okay, and then I'm going to go back into the Tunisian stitch. Oh, Evan, you like this warm lamp, don't you? Yes, it feels good. Mm -hmm. I understand it's a cold and rainy day. Okay, that's the last Tunisian stitch. And then I'm going to go up to the next Stitch on the side, pull it through, and now I'm just going directly into a yarn over and pull through two because I've already leveled up. I'm going to go through the next stitch along the way. It's like I'm making my hermit crabs cummerbund or something. <laughs> it's just the bottom front part of the, the teapot. It goes under the spout. And if you want to make it tighter, you can. So that's something else that you can do. You just go through two bars and then just pull up one. And that makes the stitch smaller. Or makes, makes that row shorter. So let me finish this row and see if I need to. 
Alright, Evan. Thank you for visiting. Bye. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. So it just goes over that. Just like that. I think we could probably um, do a couple of more. I think I'm going to shorten. So let me show you how I shorten. It's not fancy. And I'm probably going to do it over here in the corner instead of in the middle. Okay, so first I have to attach it to the side with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to go through this bar. Wait. Yeah, let's go through this bar and this bar together. Okay, and I've just shortened that. I've, now I have one less stitch on my row here. And I can do the same on the other side. And um, decrease by one on the other side. And that would mean I've decreased two stitches on this row. Okay, so here... So here, let's do this one and the side at the same time. So that decreased it. And pull through two. Actually, did that decrease? No, it didn't. You can tell because the, the bars are straight here and here. So let me show you how to decrease this. Go through these two, just like that. All right, so then we look at it. See this bar and this bar now have gone into a V, into that, this stitch right here. They were separate, separate, and now it's a V. Can you hear the squirrels outside my window? There's a, a maple tree between the houses and it um, it has a basically squirrel re it's like a little squirrel restaurant <laughs> somebody's having a lover's quarrel it's that time of year okay so now how, so I put those two together and now I just have the one so now if I do this one and this one together, I don't know, they call these bars, these, and uh, Afghan, um, Tunisian crochet. It was once called Afghan stitch, um, and it was also called the railroad stitch because of the bars. Okay, let me put these two together. Just like that. I think I'm going to try it. Let it. I'm going to try it on and see if it fits better. So there we go. We could do maybe one more row, I think, and then we'll be done with this. And I decreased again on that side. Oops.
and this might benefit from a single crochet all the way around. Just going to go ahead and cut it here. I'm very bad about all the the ends, but that's what the needle and thread is for. And I'm happy with that. Do you see how that hugs it down here? I'm very happy with that. Kind of a little snail. I want to want to be down towards the the bottom of the um, handle. that like that I want to get the whole stitch not just one half of it okay so now I know where these are going to connect here's a six okay so let's start here Slip knot, slip stitch. Let's make three stitches and uh, okay, so that's six all together. And then I'm just going to do single crochets all the way around using the appropriate sized hook for this yarn and what it will do is it will stabilize the edge of the Tunisian stitch which can be a little crazy it can really be out there uh, it wobbles and flops and curls and it this one is pretty wild because I think I may have gone too far up on um, my hook size, you know, because I used the 10 to do this. Now I'm just going to ignore this one, this um, stitch mark. I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to leave it in, but I'm not going to mess with it because that's where the button's going to go. The button is going to go on that side. And I'm going to sew that with regular needle and thread, I think. If I don't, I don't think I have any buttons that have big enough holes for this yarn to go through. I could also do uh, a knot. Okay, so this is a little, a little funky. I gotta figure out where the edges are. Watch out for your, your ends. And these are just single crochets. There's nothing fancy. I'm not doing a fancy edge. Most of this should curl under the pot. towards the bottom, around the edges. Looks like I've gone around. Okay, this is where I started. I'm just going to slip stitch into that and then do a chain stitch, pull it through. This is how much yarn I have left out of the 
88 yards. I, I'm going to probably run it underneath. I have the button here. So I'll meet you back. Just make one right in there. If you don't like how I'm doing this, you do you. If you have a better way, let me know. Because uh, we can always benefit from our collective wisdom. It's one of the lovely things about YouTube is that we can all learn from each other. I, uh, I only know how to do things that I know how to do. And always learning new things from YouTube, especially from the wonderful crafters and crocheters in our community. Yeah, you really have a wonderful, amazing group of people who love, love this craft and love to share it with each other and teach each other. It's probably the best place on the internet. If you ever want to just go and learn something, just look up crochet, especially crochet on YouTube, but I mean Instagram is great. I hear TikTok is great, but I'm not using that app for reasons. Okay, so now we have, I haven't hidden all of the Make sure you get that bottom part there. I'm going to get the top part over the lip. Okay. okay. And these strands will all be out of the way. They'll be hidden later. Here's my loop. Here's my button. <laughs> the top has a little pointy bit, but I can't be helped. So here is our body of our snail. I think the right yarn will go a long way to making this look even more pronouncedly shell-like. And you could even do less stitches. So you could do like get up to three or four stitches and then you'll have more revolutions. So it, it'll have more spirals. That's always a possibility. But let's get on to the spout. We have just enough yarn, I think, to make a spout um, drip catcher. And I'm using the 6.0 6 millimeter crochet hook cotton blend. Now this is a super short spout, so the uh, the drip catcher is probably going to fall off when you pour, which is kind of counterintuitive, but you have to jam it on there, I guess. So let's not make it too long. You want to have to stretch it. It's got to be tight. Okay. So let's make sure it's not twisted. Bring it around and do a slip, slip stitch. Just 
to a slip stitch. Okay. Now we're just going to do single crochets as if we were making a flat circle. So that means we should put two single crochets in every stitch. So here's the first, the first single crochet right there. Okay. And do every other one just a solo single crochet, just one in the, and then like the next one you can do two. Okay, so we're gonna put the eyes on. I've already done this one. All right, so that is finished. The eyes are done. But uh, for all intents and purposes, this teapot is finished. Just need to hide the, uh, the uh, strings. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, crochet your way today because it's the only time we have. Enjoy this bonus Evan footage. Yeah. You're my good boy. Let me move some of these things. Here, now you have to move. Now you have to move, baby.